The human body can survive for weeks without food, but only days without water. And that's why we can't say enough about the importance of hydration. Preventing dehydration ranks highest of all treatments for influenza. Many experts feel that preventing dehydration in flu victims can save more lives than all other treatments combined. Next to an antiviral, the best thing you can do to survive the flu is to keep properly hydrated. Proper hydration helps to loosen pulmonary secretions and rid the body of the virus. That's why you should keep drinking even if you don't feel like it. Having a sufficient supply of clean water is essential. You need to have enough water to last for an extended period of time in the event that the normal drinking water supply is disrupted. Ordinary tap water can be stored in clean plastic milk or soft drink bottles. If you're unsure about the purity of your tap water, you can boil it for one full minute or add six to ten drops of household bleach per gallon of water. When boiling water for drinking or cooking, start timing when the water comes to a boil and allow it to continue for one full minute. Let the water cool before storing it for later use. Clean water is required for both drinking and cooking. Many estimates call for one gallon per person per day for as long as the normal supply is disrupted. So it's a good idea to have at least a two-week supply on hand and more if possible. And don't forget water for your pets. When vomiting or diarrhea occurs, excessive amounts of fluid and electrolytes can be lost and they need to be replaced. Even when you can't keep anything down, you and your family members should keep drinking plenty of liquids. Sipping water or liquids may be the only way a very sick patient can tolerate taking in fluids. And small children or babies might need to be given liquids using an eyedropper. Common beverages like sports drinks, sodas, and juices contain large amounts of sugar that can draw water into the intestines and away from the rest of the body. When a person has diarrhea, these kinds of drinks may make it worse and increase the risk of dehydration. Sipping at least one cup of water, broth, soup, or other non-alcoholic beverage every waking hour will help keep you or your ill family member hydrated. That should equal two to four quarts of liquid a day. There are several symptoms of early or mild dehydration that you should look for. They include a flushed face, extreme thirst, dry, warm skin, urinating in reduced amounts, urine dark in color or not urinating at all, dizziness that is made worse when someone stands up, cramping in the arms and legs, crying with few or no tears, sleepiness or irritability, headaches, and finally, dry mouth and dry tongue with thick saliva. The symptoms of moderate to severe dehydration include low blood pressure, fainting, severe muscle contractions in the arms, legs, and stomach, back spasms, a bloated stomach, a sunken soft spot on an infant's head, dry, sunken eyes with few or no tears, skin loses its firmness and looks wrinkled, lack of elasticity of the skin, rapid and deep breathing, fast, weak pulse, Severe dehydration is an emergency and can even cause heart failure. To treat dehydration in a sick child, use an oral rehydration solution, such as Pedialyte, which is specially formulated for infants and children who have diarrhea, vomiting, or fever. These solutions contain water and salts in specific proportions to replenish both fluids and electrolytes. Oral rehydration products are readily available in most drugstores and many pharmacies carry their own brands. It's best to start giving fluids early instead of waiting until the situation becomes urgent. If you can't get a pre-formulated solution, you can make your own rehydration solution by mixing one half teaspoon of salt, one half teaspoon of baking soda, three tablespoons of sugar, and one quart of safe drinking water. Be sure to measure accurately because incorrect amounts can make the solution less effective or even harmful. Whatever alternative you choose, 
Be sure to give enough of the solution to infants. Room temperature fluids are best. A general rule of thumb is to keep giving liquid slowly until your child's urine becomes clear in color. If your child is vomiting, try giving small amounts of solution at frequent intervals, for instance, one teaspoon every minute. If your child can't keep this down, wait for 60 minutes and try again. If you give your baby formula and the baby develops diarrhea, try switching to one that's lactose-free until the diarrhea improves. Lactose can make diarrhea worse. And remember to never dilute formula more than the instructions advise. The best liquid for a sick child is an oral rehydration solution. Plain water doesn't provide essential electrolytes. And although sports drinks replenish electrolytes, they replace electrolytes lost through sweating, not through diarrhea or vomiting. Avoid giving your child salty broths, milk, especially boiled milk, sodas, fruit juices, or gelatins, which do not relieve dehydration and may make symptoms worse. Most adults with mild to moderate dehydration from diarrhea, vomiting, or fever can improve their condition by drinking more water. Avoid coffee, caffeinated tea, and other beverages that contain caffeine, as they may temporarily increase dehydration. And as mentioned before, sports drinks, fruit juices, and sodas can make diarrhea worse. Children and adults who are severely dehydrated should be treated by emergency personnel at a hospital or designated care site where they can receive salts and fluids intravenously rather than by mouth. Intravenous hydration provides the body with water and essential nutrients much more quickly than oral solutions do and may be critical in life-threatening situations. Hydration may be a more complex issue than you thought but just remember that it's mainly a matter of common sense and plenty of this.